Hi guys, it's Isa. Today we're gonna see all the books that I ever gave five stars. And so, yes, I tend to rate books really high. The majority of my ratings are three and four, 4.5, but I really have a lot of care on the books that I rate with five stars. Majority is gonna be fantasy and it's also yeah, good blend between young adult and adult fantasy. All of these books are books that when talking about it, it just makes my heart bump faster, you know? It just makes me excited whenever I hear someone talking about it or it just makes me approach someone or it's kind of like a book that my friends are just tired of me recommending every time. Let's start with the standalones and go all the way to bigger series and we have the Sport of Kagan. I just cannot love this book enough. I can't believe it has passed one year already since I read it and honestly it made me cry. It made me beg my boyfriend to read it. He read it afterwards. He loved it. Not as much as I did but I was like please read it. I couldn't stop talking about anything beyond this book. It really consumed me. I sobbed like I've never cried in a book before. It just stole my heart and it gave me a massive hangover. It's kind of like a different story. It has the main point of view of a mother and a son in this Asian inspired culture. It has elemental magic. It has this growing up and also kind of like facing one's fears and you know just stepping up. It's really character driven but the action scenes that it had are really 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 vivid. I can say that has one of the best if not the best action scenes that I've read ever. It's very Brandon Sanderson in that vibe and really I adored it. It's overall a war story. We're talking about this land, Kaigen, that it's invaded and we have this family, the Matsudas, that are kind of like in power and they need to face the situation and yes, please take it. Then we have A Happy Read with Stardust by Neil Gaiman, which will forever have a special place in my heart. It has just like my favorite trope, which is misfit on a quest. And really, it has a lot of good things on it. It's super short. Whenever I'm feeling sad, I just pick this up because really it just lifts me up. It makes me better some way. It has witches, it has pirates, and overall it has this you can make it kind of vibe and you are different, but still you are fantastic. It will talk about this man, Tristan, that will set himself on an impossible quest on finding this falling star in order to prove his love for this very mean girl. And in that process, you know, he changes and he meets a lot of people. There's a tournament, there are witches. It's very plot, plot, plot driven and really I adored it. And then we have Keikeyi, a new release from April. Keikeyi is a retelling of a Hindu story where her is the main villain. And so this story, it's kind of like under her point of view, what happens, right? And it's a story that it's very character driven. It goes pretty slow but at the same time it touches different parts of the life of KK Yi so we will see how she grows up so kind of like the plot obviously advances and advances fast and we see at its core the hardship that she will pass the different bonds that she will create is such a phenomenal character I thought and I want to be a little bit more like her. And we'll conclude with the standalones with one of my favorite authors, Andy Weir. And we have The Martian and we have also Project Hail Mary. Both are sci-fi so it's a little bit outside the fantasy box. The Martian I've read three times. I'm not really into rereading. I never think that I have time. I don't believe that's something that we usually have. And this is a book that it's a therapy for me, really, therapy. It's so optimistic how he writes stuff, how the things that happen are absolutely horrible and nonetheless he is able to move ahead and move ahead 
being funny. I think that's something that I really want to relate to as a person and this is kind of like my identity. I want to be these characters. This one talks about this astronaut that it's left behind in Mars and he will need to do whatever it takes to survive. And then Project Hail Mary is a slightly different. It conserves these elements that I absolutely adore which is overall how optimistic it is but it adds another element which is kind of like not an animal companion but there's something else in space this one talks about this person that just wakes up in space and he needs to figure out what the hell he is doing there and what's the mission and it turns out the mission is to save earth and he will need to you know try to figure out how to do that so again an impossible mission and moving ahead alrighty then we go to the only duology that I have in here which is a strange the dreamer this is such a beautiful book and I remember very clearly as well reading it like I savored this book the writing style it's very descriptive and what I loved about this book it's not only that it has this misfit in a quest a trope combination that I adore but the feeling that I had it's such a feel good but at the same time reap your heart kind of vibe I was kidnapped emotionally by this book after I read it I was like okay now what? The themes are actually not light at all, but it's beautiful and I honestly loved it. It has two points of view. The first one is of this misfit that it's kind of like always believed in this city called Weep and then one day people from Weep comes to his village and he is able to go there and help the people because it seems that something is going really 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 wrong and then we have the other point of view within Weep and we will start to see how the magic works it's a soft magic system but you know the magic was also very interesting different it's different the next one it's an unconcluded series but I just love so much the first and the second book, Fireborn and Flameful. I read it and I felt so, so like one of the main characters. I really felt that I was her. All of these phrases that she had on how she needed to overcome a situation and she was doubting herself, my fears were mirrored there, grabbed me from that moment and you know, I'm not taking a rest. I think about this very 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 often like I always find myself thinking about this book it's really political but it's very subtle the political aspect to it I'm not huge on political books but it kind of like it felt like really a smart book a really rounded book and something that just made me want to continue it had all of the elements a very very compelling characters it's a uh, friends to not necessarily lovers. It's a slow burn, but at the same time, they are so different. It has dragons, not necessarily the main element, the dragons, but really the tournaments in the first book and how it made me reflect on how things can really go wrong and how there are consequences of the stuff. It's gripping. Both books made me cry. That book, it's coming this year. I cannot wait and before getting into Brandon Sanderson because we all know that we are getting there which is have another trilogy that although separately I didn't rate with five stars overall I think it's a series that I really really love that I recommend a lot and I honestly had such a good time with it and it's A Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa it's kind of like a sunshine cross grumpy quest growing up found family combination of tropes which it just it's my vibe it has this Japanese ambience which is really 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 beautiful it has a lot of folklore a lot of monsters it's sweet but at the same time it's savage because the monsters are savage it reads almost as a video game it's a dual point of view it will talk about our main girl that it's kind of like in charge of taking one scroll to a very sacred and safe place and on its way she will meet other characters the main one is going to be Tatsumi who is kind of like this very introvert grumpy shadow samurai and he you know like will play also a role with it not really a romance story but it does have a slow burn I really loved it I really loved it and then we go to 
Stormlight Archive, which I cannot convey enough how much I loved it. I really, 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 really believe it's the best thing that Brandon has created. Each book is so satisfying. It always leaves me with this epicness. At its core, it's kind of like a war story between different species in this land and it has kind of like not only that fight but also the fight of kind of like different almost gods if we want to talk about that but it has such a care talking about mental health issues, it talks about anxiety, about depression and we follow these characters. It's really character driven and it's really plot driven at the same time and we follow these characters, we feel them, like I have the blood of them, you know, like I remember clearly reading every of these books and every time the path it's more compelling, it's more kind of like hurtful and it really it has the best endings, like the last 200 pages are always like stop your life just read and you will be just grateful for that because honestly amazing and sometimes you can think like maybe too long and he can 100% summarize but it's all worth it it's all worth it and that was it for today I really hope you liked this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this one subscribe to the channel I publish bookish content every Tuesday and Friday for you to enjoy and I really hope to see you soon in other videos Happy reading. Bye.